Welcome to another walkthrough. Um, this walkthrough is for our unit number one and two. They're the same exact floor plan. Um, it's a Jayco 267 BHS. Um, so we'll start. You just have an outside storage cubby hole. You got to release the latch, open it. It's a full pass through. Um, so you could put all your stuff in there that you're not using all the time. The next thing is this unit has an outside kitchen. So it's a smaller kitchen, but it's kind of nice to have. So you just release these two latches, one on each side. Release those. It's got a magnetic lasp at the top, so you don't have to hold it. It'll just push it up, and when it clicks, you're good to go. Your sink has hot and cold water. It's got a small dorm fridge, mm -hmm. which is nice for not having to go inside and outside. And then it's got one little drawer. When you're done, all you got to do is reach up to the top, pull that door down, and latch one of the latches. We'll go inside. You open the door. These new doors do not have latches like the old school doors. They're spring loaded, so they actually stay open by themselves. And unless it's ungoshly windy, they'll stay open. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the monitor panel. This is your informational center for the coach. So the first button we have is our water pump can leave that on all the time. That gets the pressure from down below up like an old school well pump in the country. Next, we have two water heaters. One is LP gas and one is electric. I always turn the electric one on um, because I'm using their electric instead of my gas. It ends up saving us quite a bit of money at the end of the season. Um, that'll take about probably about 45 minutes to heat up. We always turn them on when we get to the campsite. So that one will be about 45 minutes. The next one, it's got four buttons for your battery, which you don't have to worry about. The fresh water is the amount of onboard water you have, which is usually about 40 gallons. Your black is your toilet, and your gray is your sinks and showers. This has got the lights. One light is empty, two lights is one-third, three lights is two-thirds, and four lights is full. So we'll push the fresh water to see how much we have right now. So right now there's a third of a tank left. Um, when you get it, it'll be completely full. Like I said, it's about 40 gallons, which is not a lot of water. You just got to be very cautious. Try to use the park's water as much as you can. Black is your toilet. So you'll push it. That's empty. A lot of times that will read wrong because it gets toilet paper on the sensors. Um, but when I deliver them, the black and the gray have both been emptied and your fresh will be full. So we'll push the gray and that's empty also. So they're reading correct. The next thing is your awning. It's got an in and an out button. So all you have to do to put it out is to hit the button. It's an automatic awning. It's not very strong. This is the only thing not covered by insurance. So you guys are 100% responsible for this awning. So if it's windy, make sure you put it away. At night, put it away. Even if you're going to leave for an hour, put it away. When it's all the way out, there will be a valance at the end, which is a piece of fabric that will fall right there. And when you see the black tube, that means it's all the way out. The next thing is if it's raining, you want to pitch the awning towards the off door side. So you'll see this arm on the very bottom. It's a split arm. If you pull it down right in the middle, it'll turn into a V and it'll drop that end. So then the water will divert away from your door and off of the awning. Uh, if you don't do that, it has a possibility of catching in the middle of the awning and it'll break this main bar right in half. Um, so just make sure you're cautious with that. To bring it in, all you do is push the awning in button, and it'll come in. Uh, some of them are slower than others. This is about a medium speed one. Uh, different manufacturers are different speed. But you just want to bring it all the way up to the coach until it stops. Underneath the awning there, against the wall, it's got a full LED light strip also. So when you turn the outside light on, it lights the whole side of the camper up makes it a lot nicer than the way they used to do it with just those little white lights. So there you go. This next button is your slide room. Um, the slide room I'll put out when I set it up for you so you won't have to do anything for that. You have two switches. This first switch is for your outside LED light strip underneath that awning that I just spoke about. And the next one here is for your uh, living room lights only. So you turn those on and off right there. The next thing is the microwave. It's just like your microwave at home, um, just a little bit smaller. 
The next thing is it's got a glass cooktop on top of the stove. This is not for cooking on. This is just to add more counter space. So before you cook, make sure you open this up. If you do not, that glass shatters and it makes a mess. So all you have to do is there's three burners. You have the first burner, second burner, third burner. The fourth one is for your oven. They're also marked to which ones they are. So all you got to do is push the button in and turn it to the little light symbol and then turn the sparker clockwise and it'll light it up. When you're all done cooking, just turn this all the way off. The next thing is it's got a hood vent here. Make sure you turn that on anytime you're cooking. Um, it'll get the heat and moisture out of the campers. Moisture is what kills the campers. So we want to get as much moisture out as we can. The next thing is the fridge. Um, these are kind of large fridges. They have little pull tabs here. You just have to pull it in, pull it out. Um, but yeah, it's got a nice size fridge in this. The next one is the top is your freezer. Same thing, pull that tab in, open it, and you got your freezer. You got two storage containers to put all your food and stuff. You got two double bunks, which means two people can sleep on each bunk. So you can get one, two, three, four people on here. Um, it's a lot more comfortable with one person, but two people can stay. I believe the weight capacity of these are 400, so just make sure you're aware of that. The next thing we have is the bathroom. Um, if you're not on a full hookup site, I would not recommend using the shower as you'll deplete your water supply really fast. Uh, you have a foot flush toilet. Which is very easy to use. All you have to do is push this pedal down all the way to flush it. And if you want to add water to the toilet, you just push it ever so slightly and it'll fill up. Make sure you're really cautious with your toilet paper usage in these toilets. They plug up really easily. So try to use a lot of water when you flush and don't use very much toilet paper. The next thing is the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is really nice because you can use it when somebody is using the restroom. We have our dinette, which converts into a bed. If you grab this top and lift it off both sides, these bars are inside of the socket at the top and on the bottom. When you lift that table up, it'll come out of the socket. You take the bars off, set them on the floor, and then this tabletop sits on these runners. And then you can just pull the cushions in and that creates a bed. Um, the next thing is the Dometic thermostat this is a touch pad they're not buttons so don't try to push them it's like a cell phone so you just got to push it very light so if you push it once it's going to come it's saying it's off push it again now it's saying it's an auto that is this fan speed you always want that to say auto so we'll hit it again the next thing it's showing it's cool so that's your air conditioner, so it'll kick on, and that's your temperature of your air conditioner. If you want to move it, you can push it up or down. Um, you push it one more time, it'll come furnace. You push it one more time, it'll turn it back off. Now, if this is reading in Celsius instead of Fahrenheit, you've got to lightly touch the up and down buttons together, and it'll change it. So if it's in the wrong setting and you want the other setting, um, from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you just gotta tap those two up and down buttons. But again, this is a touch pad, they're not buttons, so be very careful with that. The last thing is the um, jackknife couch. So all you have to do co to convert this is you have to lift the front up, and when it gets at about a 45 degree angle, it'll automatically fall. Um, it gives you kind of a nice little for a kid. Um, two kids could actually sleep on here, but they're gonna be super, crowded so i would recommend one person to lift it up all you do is grab here and you're going to lift it up towards the ceiling at about a 45 and then use your body weight to push it in a little bit and then it'll automatically fall just like that the next thing is the tv it's a smart tv some of these smart tvs we have in the campers will not hook up to cable so if you're hooked up to a full hookup site sometimes the tv won't accept cable this one's actually Roku in our one and two units, so you can hook your phone to it. The stereo system, super basic. Um, it's got a zone one and a zone two. It has inside and outside speakers, so just make sure you're aware of that. Zone two is probably the outside speakers. Um, the next thing 
is the bedroom. You have two small little hanging closets on each side um, that you can put your clothes in and then it's got the shelf on top. Underneath the bed, there's a piece of plywood and if you lift that piece of plywood up, there's more storage to put stuff you're not gonna need. Just make sure you double check every storage area in this camper because a lot of times people will forget stuff in here. The next thing you gotta do to put it down is just hold this plywood and push it down. It's kinda hard with those struts, but it'll come down and you're good to go. And that concludes our walkthrough of our unit one and two.